Hello and welcome folks to a new video. So if you watched my last video, you'll know exactly what this is about. Um, I got my little power supply module boards manufactured and it's time to test them. So um, this is the one I've prepared for testing uh, from the factory. It didn't, doesn't have the header pins and also doesn't have the switch. Um, these are through hole components. I happen to have a bunch of these switches that I kind of like the form factor of. Um, and I couldn't find a surface mount that I liked this the size of. So uh, I went with through hole and just had to solder on the switch myself, solder on the header pins myself. Um, but the rest of this was manufactured in the factory and they really do a lovely job. Um, three really nice, uh, silt screen is nice. Labels are nice. Let's try and get it a little closer for you guys, but oh, focus, there we go. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice finish. Um, lovely can't really complain about it so we need to test it um, and it's really simple <laughs> to test basically we just need to connect some power to the VIN pin and then flick the switch on and off and make sure that it works if we get 5 and 3.3 volts out of these VIN stays VIN ground stays ground that is a success <laughs> so that's all we got to do um, another nice point about this the way I designed it so this is going to be a module that I'll plug into like different projects and stuff so if I have a you know a, a carrier board this would fit in so I've spaced these to be a common kind of uh, you know uh, 2.54 pitch um, so it also fits in a breadboard which is quite nice so we can slot it in Oop. slot it in and it fits in just like that uh, it is a little bit wider than I might like. So in the breadboard, it's kind of, that's not straight. <laughs> so in the breadboard, it's sort of the width of the board kind of obscures the pins where you'd want to be able to connect it. You can connect stuff to it. It's just, you know, a little bit finicky. Um, but it's fine. Once you get it in, it's absolutely fine. Uh, it works perfectly. Um, and yeah. So without any further ado, let's set up the oscilloscope get my multimeter and do some tests on this bad boy. Okay, so I have a pretty simple test set up here um, to see what the switching looks like. Um, I have my oscilloscope wired up, it's connected up. Um, and I can stick my uh, multimeter on to see. So we got switches off, oh, multimeter's off. Switches off right now, kind of no volts, uh, switch it on, and I have no power connected, there we go, connect the power, switch it on, that's uh, the 3.3 volt pin, uh, so my 5 volt pin is also on, uh, 5 volts, um, this is connected to my oscilloscope, the 5 volt pin, so what I'll do is, I'll switch this on and off, on and off, and you'll be able to see like a waveform here, which is the switching. So let's see what that looks like. Ew, there we go. <laughs> if I try to switch it faster, you see the switching. If I switch it slower, you can see, get a better picture of what it's doing. So you can see sharp ramp up and then kind of a bleed down when you turn it off. The um, reason for that is the onboard capacitors, which are there to sort of filter the outputs have to discharge once you turn the switch off. Um, I, it seems I sized them fairly appropriately. Now there's no load on this, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's gonna happen, but uh, they're bleeding down pretty quickly. So it's a kind of a sharp enough drop off, not, nothing crazy. Um, and there's a, a kind of a spike when you turn it on. But importantly, the spike of current that happens as the capacitors charge when you turn it on isn't flowing through the switch at all. So the switch is barely contacting any voltage uh, any current I should say um, most of that's all flowing through the FETs and the BJT there from the input so that's pretty nice um, and yeah that's about as simple as it gets <laughs> I'm just having a lot of fun now just watching the, uh, the waveform on the oscilloscope as I switch it play a game see how fast I can switch it there we go high frequency <laughs> so I think that's pretty much it for this <laughs> it's a little switch that works. Um, I can turn it on and off. Light comes on. I got my 3.3 volts. That works. 
and then I got my five volts. That also works. <laughs> and right now I have my five volts powering this little Arduino, um, which is attempting to write something serially. I have a little flash. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, got a little power supply board that works with a switch on it. I'm really happy with it. So next thing I'm gonna do, um, I'm probably going to um, make a V2 of this, where instead of having four header pins, it's gonna have a fifth header pin. Fifth header pin is going to be for a switched version of the input. So right now the input is always on. So that's matching my supply voltage, nine volts there. Um, and if I, so I'm gonna put another pin in here. So you'll have ground, V in, V out, which will just be a switched version of V in. So it'll go through the same switching logic and then five volts and 3.3 volts, which are currently switched as well. And yeah, that's it. So really quick one here. Just really happy that this worked. Um, not often you design something, get it made, and it just works straight away. So pretty happy with that. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Um, if you like this kind of video, you like this electronic stuff, stay tuned because I have a new electronics project coming up, which I think you guys will like. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.